How did the continents appear during the Ice Age? We are so familiar with our planet's geography that it is difficult to picture what it was like when the world was covered in ice more than 10,000 years ago. Today we'll try to show how our world looked when cold and ice were everywhere, how big the differences were compared to the modern day, and which locations vanished following the Ice Age. Hello and welcome to Z. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you won't miss any of our daily videos. Humans have been in this world as a species for approximately 200,000 years, which means that we have witnessed several periods in human history when global temperatures dropped dramatically, but for this video, we will consider the maximum peak of the last ice age, which occurred approximately 20,000 years ago, and this was the period when temperatures were lowest. During this time, it is estimated that massive glaciers and ice sheets covered 8% of the planet's surface and 25% of the land surface, whereas today, ice covers only 3% of the planet's surface and 11% of the land surface. In other words, there were more than twice as many glaciers 20,000 years ago as there are today. This suggests that there was an additional 56 million cubic kilometers of ice on the Earth during the previous ice age, which originated primarily from ocean water. Because today's water in the oceans was confined in enormous glaciers 20,000 years ago, sea levels dropped by more than 130 meters. The decline in sea level exposed enormous parts of Earth that are now several meters below sea level and above the sea level at the time, increasing the size of continents, several islands, and even linking areas that are now separated by oceans and seas. South America The few glaciers that exist today are mostly found in three places of the world, Antarctica, the North Pole, and the Himalayas, but there were many more glaciers and ice sheets during the last major ice age. Because Antarctica has historically had the largest glaciers and ice on the Earth, the ice caps extended many kilometers around the continent during the last Great Ice Age, connecting Antarctica to South America. As a result, the creatures in southern Argentina may be able to trek from America to Antarctica over the Southern Ocean. The Patagonian ice sheet extended all the way to Peru's Andes Highlands, connecting Antarctica and South America. At the same time, the most mountainous portions of Venezuela and Colombia were covered with ice, building gigantic glaciers that stretched for hundreds of kilometers, creating a totally different Arctic environment than the one that exists now in both nations. Only the remnants of huge glaciers that once spanned over the whole Andes mountain range exist today. We must remember that the water of the seas and oceans acts as an impediment to the spread of ice, therefore it will always be easier for ice to accumulate on land than on water. As a result, the most substantial changes would occur in the northern hemisphere, which has the greatest quantity of the earth. Before continuing, please let us know if you liked or disliked the video so that we can make it better for you, plus don't forget to subscribe to our channel by pressing the notification bell to ensure you don't miss any of our daily videos. North America 20,000 years ago, what is now Canada was completely covered in ice, extending all the way to the northern tip of the United States. The glaciers are estimated to have extended in mountainous areas from Canada to Mexico, spanning not just the North Pole, but also a line in the center of the three countries that comprise North America. As the world warmed, the North American ice cap receded and evaporated, resulting in the famed Great Lakes in the United States and Canada. As previously said, one of the most notable developments at this time was the fall in sea level, which resulted in the formation of land bridges that are now submerged underwater. The Beringia Land Bridge, now known as the Bering Strait, is one of the most well-known. Although it is difficult to imagine our ancestors crossing from one continent to another through this water-filled strait today, thousands of years ago this site had no water and instead was an emerged plain covered in ice that lasted for several tens of thousands of years. It was a time when not only our forefathers but also other animal species set out to explore these undiscovered territories. During this time, there was a slow but steady growth of numerous animal species that would establish in North American areas before migrating to South America in pursuit of more temperate climates and edible plants. Europe 
The scenario on the European continent was far more drastic as an ice sheet emerged that stretched from the British Isles to Siberia. In the case of the Mediterranean Sea, many experts believe that if sea levels had been lower and plate tectonics had not yet caused such a pronounced decrease as it is now, the Strait of Gibraltar would have been closed, uniting Europe and Africa at the time. Thus separating the Mediterranean Sea from the rest of the oceans, transforming it into a massive lake or even dividing it into smaller lakes, each with a small frozen section bordering Italy, Austria, and France. In addition to the well-known changes in the seas, the extension of the North Pole's ice cap would have blocked the passage of the Yenisei and Obi rivers which, unable to flow into the Arctic Ocean, would have accumulated in Siberia, resulting in the formation of a vast lake in western Siberia with an area of more than 800,000 square kilometers. The European Alps, like the Andes of South America, formed an ice sheet with glaciers that flowed into the Mediterranean Sea. While in the portion that now belongs to Russia, there were just a few modifications and it was covered with vast sheets of ice. This region is substantially colder than North America or Europe, therefore why didn't the ice sheets extend as far as eastern Siberia if it was colder? The answer is that air currents from the Pacific Ocean transfer the majority of the water and humidity to the east, that is, to the American continent. In turn, the emerging surface increased and drove the coast further east, further displacing the wet streams. The ice sheet and receding waves would totally drain the Celtic, Baltic, and North Seas in the continent's north. As a result, Great Britain, Ireland, and Scandinavia were linked by a land surface where those waters are now located. Despite the fact that this region would be connected by land, it would be covered by a thick layer of ice several meters thick. This provides us a better understanding of how glaciers and ice and frigid settings were far more frequent on Earth 20,000 years ago than they are today. Asia the Asian continent experienced the largest alterations during the previous Great Ice Age. Because it is made up of lower areas, earth linkages were developed due to the dip in sea level. The ice sheets in the Himalayas were much larger than they are today, spanning sections of India and China. As a result, the shallow seas surrounding Japan were completely dry at the time, connecting this country to the Asian continent. That's right, Japan was not an island 20,000 years ago, but was instead joined to South Korea by a dip in sea level. This link formed a large lake in the heart of Asia, straddling Japan, China, Russia, and Korea. The Yellow Sea did not exist at the time and in its stead, an emerging surface connected China to the Korean Peninsula, Japan, and Taiwan. Another significant change that could be observed in the Asian continent at this time would be in the Indonesian region, as in Japan, the drop in sea level caused all of the islands that make up the region to be connected by an emerged surface that would adjoin Borneo, Sumatra, Java, and South Asia, thus creating the Sundalands. If someone could travel back in time and witness this region of the world from space 20,000 years ago, it would be entirely unrecognizable. Some experts believe the Sunderlands region will expand all the way to the Philippines. Because of this terrestrial connection, Asian species such as elephants, apes, tigers, and rhinos were able to wander on foot until they occupied all of the region's islands. The Persian Gulf, like the Yellow Sea, was completely drained by the dropping seas, giving rise to a landmass that joined Saudi Arabia with Iran and in turn, connected Asia with the African continent in two spots, transforming the Red Sea into a landlocked lake. Oceania Oceania, like Asia, experienced substantial changes throughout this time period. The Torres Strait currently separates the islands of Australia and New Guinea, but it did not exist during the previous Ice Age. Instead, an emerging land joined Australia and New Guinea, establishing a single continent that was also linked to Tasmania. This continent would be known as Sahul, and with a surface area of 12 million square kilometers, it may have been as large as Antarctica is now. As if that weren't enough, the temperatures would have resulted in gigantic glaciers covering Tasmania, thus even this scorching and dry location would not have been immune to the power of glaciers. For their part, the two New Zealand islands would have been combined into a single massive island equally covered with glaciers. 
Africa. Finally, the African continent would be the least damaged by glacial. Nonetheless, global temperatures meant no tropical forests such as those seen in the Congo today. Africa did not have massive glaciers like America or many emerging lands like as Asia. On this excursion, we saw how nature's power can be unrelenting and drastically modify the landscapes and nature in which we live. Because to the quantity of ice, the earth was unrecognizable thousands of years ago. Is it feasible that this freezing environment may once again take over our planet? Is it possible that another ice age will occur? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.